Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay video at keepsakecrafts.net. Today I'm going to show you how to use stencils and sparkling mica powders to make really simple designs on your polymer clay. So here I have an assortment of mica powders. There's Perfect Pearls, there's also Pearlex, there's a couple brands, and I have some stencils. These are all brass stencils. I actually got these when I was working in scrapbooking. What I like about these is they have very small detailed designs and we can select portions of these to use on polymer clay pieces. And there are quite a few here that are suitable and the idea is that you here's this iris that you might take a cutter and take a portion of the design and then use that to make a piece of jewelry or whatever it is you're making. Now here's a uh, poinsettia and it also has some holly berries and here's a piece that I made and you can see I blended in several colors to get the uh, the Christmas shades that I wanted. This is definitely a technique that you want to spend some time experimenting with to get the look you want. Now here's one I did and you can see although the design is really pretty I love the purple and the blue and the green I put it on some clay that didn't have really enough contrast. Unless you're going for a very subtle look, you can kind of hardly see the seahorse on here. So make sure that you have good contrast with the colors that you choose. This one is a really pretty shell. I blended in some pink and the white pearl, but I could have done a better job planning with my cutter. I use this. It's kind of tricky once you've made your decorated sheet. So what I highly recommend you do is actually audition your cutters or your shapes or your templates with the stencils before you even put this to the clay. You know, right away I can see that that is obviously too small for this. It's kind of crowded. This one turned out to be one of my favorites. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I think it's just so cool. And I use this stencil. It's a bigger stencil. I've used this before, put white embossing paste and sprinkled glitter on it for a winter card. This one I just used some black mixed with silver clay and then put pewter perfect pearls on it. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing this technique is that you can't really manipulate the clay much after you've applied the pearls to get different shapes. So that's why these two are just baked flat as is and I, if I was going to make something with these I might go back and add a clay border or add some other clay on top of them, add thicker clay to the backing, jazz them up and beef them up a bit. Now this one, all I did was I laid it on top of the Sculpey Hollow Bead Maker. I just laid it flat on that before I baked it and I let it slump in the oven to a little bit of a curve. And then this one I baked actually on some of my favorite forms, toilet paper tubes. I put part of it on this one and then had that one on the, the surface and just got kind of an interesting shape. Now first of all, like I said, you need to decide what cutter you're going to use or what shape you're going to use on your piece. Or you may, like this one, I used a flexible blade to cut out the shapes, but have an idea of what it kind of shape you want to get. Now this one has all these little holly branches all around it. Some of them came in pretty close. And so what I used was some tape, just tape to cover those over. And then because this one is so small and has so much detail, I used daubers. These are a Martha Stewart set. I'll have links in the description box below. And you can use the daubers to apply your perfect pearls. If you're using a larger design like this one, I'll show you how to use a brush to do this. So I'm going to do just these little, this little holly leaf and berry here. And so I'm going to use my tape and mask off the poinsettia. Now this step is very important. You want to take your acrylic roller and just roll over the clay. You don't want to press real hard. Just like go, go back and forth firmly enough so that that is adhered down to the clay so none of the powders sneak underneath. So I'll start with my red mica. Dip your dauber in 
And if you want to keep your daubers operating, don't rub it. Just dab. Because if you rub, it's going to abrade this uh, little spongy surface. So just dab that right onto where you want it. To change between colors, really all you need to do is have a bit of paper towel and just keep dabbing it off until the color is gone. And when you're do completely done with your project, you can just wash those in hot soapy water and they come clean. Oh, now here's a good illustration for you. I forgot a very important step, and that is you got to mask off these edges. See how I got some of the red powder on the white clay? Take a piece of tape and just use the pad of your finger. Try not to get any fingernail gouges and that should lift it up. You might have to do it a couple times. But what I forgot to do is to take my sticky notes. These are perfect because they're not going to stick real hard, so they lift up easily without leaving gouges or dents in your clay. And then you can just mask off whatever you need to. And by the way, those of you who are my patrons, I will be uploading a new video just for you showing some of the uh, decision making and such that I did while making some of the samples. So I hope you enjoy that if you're a patron. And I'm going to take my finger, I'm going to kind of rub away from the leaves and kind of rub that in a little. And I'm going to add some green. Now the thing to remember when you're adding the pearl to clay is that the clay is sticky and therefore will hold on to the pearl, but it will only hold on to one layer. You cannot build up layers. Uh, once it's done baking, whatever is on top will brush right off. So you only get one layer worth of the pearls. And I found that was important to remember when I was trying to blend. So if I have this lower part of the leaf covered solid with the green, and then I put another color, like I'm going to go over it with the blue patina, because the green and the blue together I found kind of give you an evergreen color. Whatever the green was initially, the blue is not going to stick. It may look like it now because it's sitting on top of it. So if you like this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and share, and then make sure and subscribe if you haven't already. I do upload new tutorials every Tuesday and Friday. I'm always afraid I'm going to sneeze or something, so I always put these away as soon as I'm done with them. And then, this is important, take your finger and go over it and get up, I kind of have a paper towel here, get up as much of the excess as you can. And now you can peel up your sticky notes. Be gentle so you're not sprinkling powder elsewhere on your clay. Gently lift the stencil up. And there you have it. I'll use my cutter to cut that out. So let's go ahead and give it a try with this one. So the first step, put your stencil on, take your acrylic roller, just go over once, twice. Use your sticky notes to mask off the rest of the clay. So we'll start here. This is an interference red, which is kind of pretty. When you're using a brush, do tap off the excess. So I'm going to start with some color in the middle. Now you don't have to blend, you can just use one solid color. I just think that's kind of half the fun of it. And now you can see I didn't tap off my brush enough and I've got some extra more than I want there. And so if you ever make a mistake, put some more than you want. Just take a bit of tape and it will lift it up. And now I'm just going to fill in the rest that rest that wants to be filled in, and I'm kind of using a scrubbing motion. Fill that in with red. Another reason you don't want to have too much powder on your brush is that it can it can get over here, and then when you remove the pieces, you can end up with mica powder uh, in places on your clay that you don't want it. So I'm going to just take my finger and give that a good rub. On these bigger ones, it's easier with your finger. On the small ones, you can't really get all the way down to the, the edges of the smaller shapes. Whoops. Now I've got some red on my leaves. And there. And now add some greens. I don't have a ton of colors of pearls, so I had to get creative. And I have to say I'm really loving this combination of the blue patina with the green patina or the forever green. 
burnish it in and at the same time rub off some of the excess. You really want to get as much excess off your stencil as you can so that when you lift it up you don't dump little bits of powder on your clay. And if you do have powder on top of your stencil, just lift it up very slowly. Just let it ease up so it doesn't pop too much. Now this one seems okay, but on this one, I wanted to show you a little trick. There's a little excess mica powder in spots I'm not happy with. And what you can use is a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And it's a great cleaner upper. And then this time I'll show you how to cut this one using a flexible blade. Let's see. I tend to just figure it out as I go along. I like these curving, swooping shapes. They kind of echo the shape of the flower. So if you've learned something from my videos and enjoyed them, I'd love it if you'd consider becoming a patron because, uh, you know, I have to buy materials and supplies and I'm always you know, trying new things and looking for new ideas to show you. You can support this channel with a dollar a month or whatever you can afford. And there's a link to my Patreon page in the description box. So then you can shape your pieces however you like. Why have it be flat when you can give it a curve? I'll just put it on there. Like I said, you can't manipulate these much because you'll smudge your powders, but you can do a little bit. And then when it comes out of the oven, you can just kind of rub off the excess powder if there is any. There might be some like on the edges of each of the shapes where your finger couldn't get into. So the cool thing about these pieces is once you remove that excess layer of perfect pearls, like I said, you get one layer, this will not come off. It does not rub off because you baked it on. If you added it after baking, it, it will rub off without being sealed. But that is on there, so that's kind of nice. And by the way, you don't only have to use uh, brass stencils. These are some plastic stencils from Tim Holtz. Uh, this one has some nice detail to it, the damask, and this one has a lot of nice detail to it, the lace. So you just look for stencils that have the scale and the detail that you want to use. So if you're interested in the supplies I use, there's a link in the upper right and the description box to go to my blog post. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and check out my Patreon page to help support these videos and get some nice rewards for yourself. Thanks for watching. Happy creating. Bye-bye.